Like, dude, you can go on Flipper, find a site that's making 50 bucks a week. That's not a lot, but that means it's already ranking for some keywords. And if you know more about monetization than the previous owner, you might be able to just implement some new affiliate links somewhere, rank for a couple more SEO terms, and boom, now you got it to $50 a day. Then you start adding extra pages and ranking it up or having somebody else doing it. Now you get into dang on $100 a day and so on and so forth. So they understand these principles. So yeah, they don't just own the Disney World or Disneyland. Look at this. They own the Disney World Resort, the Magic Kingdom, uh, Blizzard Beach, which I was pissed that I didn't get to go to when I was younger. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to go to Blizzard Beach. They got the resort for Disney. They got Fantasyland. All of these dang on freaking thing parks, though. And each of them are perfect with monetization. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Come on. Then they got studios and other companies that Disney owns. All right. You know, they make their own movies and stuff, right? So they got Pixar Animation. I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all like freaking Marvel, right? They own all of that. Then they got their own Walt Disney Studios. <laughs> and the list just goes on, man. Like, I, I really don't know how. As of 2021, Disney's net income was close to $2.2 billion. You understand what I'm talking about? That's when you have a perfect theme park product. And then you have assets that have their own theme park products. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to something. Remember, you can hide your assets. So this $2.2 billion generated, <laughs> that doesn't mean that's all they made. That's all their public companies that you know about, that I know about. Y'all understand? So this is why it's extremely powerful to own assets. And, and you don't have to be rich to do it. You can start off small. You get one asset to start making you some money. Then you take the money that you're profiting from that asset to go and purchase another asset. Remember, I was talking about the website flipper.com. You go there, you find a website that's making $50 a month and you can pay them a thousand or two thousand dollars. You like pay two thousand dollars for something that's only making fifty dollars a month. You, when you're an investor, you have to see uh earning potentials. I'm not saying just go buy any dang on website, you need to see why they're only making that much. So they're they're proven because they're making something. So, like, what could be done to enhance? The earnings on that platform easily within the next month or two that will triple what is making right now or more. But guess what? Even if you bought it as is, it's already making money. So you only paid that couple thousand dollars one time. So if it's paying you $50 a week or a month or something like that, you will make up for that you know, in a year or whatever, even if you just left it at that. But now you got this asset out there that's continuously bringing you in money and it has more earning potential if you just actually apply a little bit extra effort to it. And it took away the what ifs. What if this business model don't work? What if this niche isn't uh, able to be monetized? Well, it took that all away because when you bought it, it was already monetized. Oh, snappage. That's how you make it inevitable. Why don't you purchase what's already monetized? Why don't you go into something that's already proven? Then you don't have to cross your fingers, right? 